there's someone that's listening right now that's in pain and you're kind of tired of being in pain. You're kind of tired of feeling like you're just spinning your wheels. Let's stop spinning. Let's start moving. Find that happiness, find that joy, find that excitement that you used to have. Let's rekindle it and let's get you going at lightning speeds. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hello and welcome to the My Future Business Show. It's Rick Nusky here today. I have something really special on the line for you. We've been just talking prior to the call and I can tell you this is going to be a very exciting call. But uh, not only is it going to be fun and full of laughter, we're going to be talking about some serious uh, topics such as leadership and life and all these other things. And with that being said, welcome to the show, Dr. Mark Leonard. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Looking forward to this. Yes, absolutely. A pleasure to have you here. Now, uh, for context, uh, Mark, we usually start off by talking a little bit about you so that everybody on the show gets to know a little bit about the, uh, I guess, the person behind the business and all the processes that you're involved in. So I'm wondering if we could uh, learn a little bit about where you live. Where are you calling in from today? Yeah, I'm calling in from the Scottsdale, Arizona area. Yes, where it is hot, just like it sounds. Whenever you think of Phoenix, it's warm here. Yeah, look, I having driven through, uh, you know, Death Valley myself, I, I can attest that it gets uh, very hot, to say the least. What do you like about living there? Oh, uh, you know, I actually, um, out here, for those of us that love the heat, we call ourselves desert rats. We just <laughs> love to be to be out here. And what I love about it, honestly, is this time of year, when you see the cactus in bloom, you see the flowers, you see all the new life. It's just a beautiful place to be. You know what, having driven through there, like I mentioned, you know, you drive through the old uh, ghost towns, you know, the old cowboy uh, ranches, and they're really historical. One thing I do remember, I can't exactly remember where it was out there, but I was driving down a highway in an open top Mustang, and I remember seeing this little black dot coming at me. I thought, hang on, that little black dot's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It turned out to be a Black Hawk helicopter. Do you get that sort of thing happening often out there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, You know, we... (laughs) There is always something out here, uh, which is really one of the things I love about it. Oh, yeah, we've got helicopters. We've got, you know, obviously the military bases. Yep. They're all around us. Yep. And uh, but really what's a lot of fun is getting out on those winding roads and going out amongst the saguaro cactuses and yes. getting to see you know the old west yes it's a, it's a great fun place to be absolutely and there's lots of uh, reasons to go exploring you know i, I like watching documentaries I'm, um, I'm wondering if we can talk about that with you and in terms of when you're out in the outback out there you see lots of different uh, animals you know scorpions and snakes and does that does that interest you at all <laughs> <laughs> so you know I, i've got to tell you uh you know, I was I was more afraid in the land down in Oz uh, because <laughs> you know y'all y'all got those little bitty redbacks. Oh know, those yes. Little, oh yeah. Those 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 scare me out yeah. here. Uh, we know where the scorpions are. Uh, <laughs> it, it just anywhere there's dirt, which is everywhere. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but actually, you know what's a lot of fun is when we have people come in from out of town. We will take them scorpion hunting. Oh and wow. It's something that that they haven't done it's it's a uh, it's a little eerie but it's also really pretty magical yeah. when you find those beautiful little creatures yes uh, we just don't pick them up and play with them of but, course you not. Know. <laughs> <laughs> and I, as i understand it they glow as well if you put the black light on them well, well yeah yeah that, that's how we find them is you go at night yeah. and you take a, a little uv black light yep yeah, yep yeah, yeah. and, and they just light up as as bright as a christmas tree yeah, now look, I, I love this sort of conversation because I get to learn a lot about, as do the audience, a lot about you and what you enjoy doing. Now, do you like music? And if so, what sort of oh. music do you like? Oh, I'm I am a country music fanatic. <laughs> uh, in fact, honestly, today I was up at barrel racing and watching cowboys and cowgirls all day long. I just love that old west yes. uh, feel out here. So yeah, I am a I am a country music. A holic, I guess you could say. Would that be? Uh, would that dovetail into your hobbies? Is that uh, what you would call a hobby as well, or what else do you like doing? Yeah, you know, um, actually, one of my favorite hobbies is, and I'm so grateful. It's one that my wife loves as well. It's traveling and learning about culture. 
Yes. Um, I mean, this world is absolutely fabulous, isn't it? There are just so many incredibly neat, beautiful cultures of people all around the world. And I love going in and uh, getting to know the actual people, not not the tourist. Mm. Uh, the, tour, the touristy thing is fun, but I love getting to know and see the 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 sense, you know, the the beautiful aromas the vibrancy all around the world and yep. the people are just so amazing and beautiful you know i looked at your your photo your images that have come through to me and i just got this overwhelming sense of happiness and in a world yeah. which we spoke of just very briefly oftentimes it might be a challenge to be so uh, joyous and uh, you know abundantly happy what do you yeah. say to people who are struggling through throughout the tumultuous times we're living through at the moment what would you say to them about happiness you know what? Um, I've been there. Uh, mm. So, so the very first thing is what you see on Instagram for so many people mm. is not reality. Yeah. And it, once you begin to separate yourself from what you believe is what what happiness looks like, suddenly you find what your own journey to happiness will actually feel like, because happiness is a feeling, and it's also a journey. Yeah. It's it's much like hiking the outback there or hiking out here in the Grand Canyon. There's going to be lots of ups and downs, but happiness is about figuring out what what you want and then figure out how to take the next step. Not maybe the whole map, but just taking that next step to where to where you're trying to go. Yeah. What you're trying to achieve and have and uh and then the other side of it is you know what? There's going to be some hard days. Yeah, there's of course. going to be, you know, we live in a very interesting world. And, and if you really think about the last few years, if there's anything that this world needs, it's connection. Yeah, it's, it's about being together mm -hmm. um, and finding ways to connect. And what's interesting is when you're struggling with happiness, take a look at your connections. Take a look to see who's fueling you and who is sucking the gas out. Yeah, there's definitely two sides to the coin. And I love the fact that you've called your website the Happiness Breakthrough. We're going to obviously use that as a bit of a dovetail to talk about in the moment. But what I'd love to do, Mark, is give people, again, that context for understanding you. So let's yeah. go back a few years, not very many, to when you were a child. I'm wondering where you grew up and what childhood looked like for you. You know, I had one of those interesting childhoods. Um, uh, I guess you could say I, I was, I was in that we, we call it out here the Great American Dream uh, family. Yep. Where things look really, really good on the outside, but on the inside they could also be pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. um, I've lived in Florida. That's where I was born. Yep. So I'm a mix between the beach and the desert. Uh, there's a common thread there. Uh, one has water, one doesn't, but they both have sand. <laughs> uh, Love it. Um, you know, uh, I've also grew up and spent a lot of time in Colorado, so mm -hmm. up in the mountains. In the springs and, and stuff. Yeah, and then also in California, which is where I met my sweetheart. Uh, we're high school sweethearts, actually. Oh, wow. And you've been uh, married for several decades now. And you're a grandparent, you're a parent, and we're going to talk about that too. What's that journey been like for you? <laughs> you know what? It's, it, I, marriage, marriage is not always you know, these roses, mm -hmm. but it is something that is a worthwhile pursuit. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, do, do you mind if I share a little bit about oh, my I'd love marriage? to. I would absolutely love to. Yes. So uh, halfway through my 11th grade year in high school, uh, my family, my, my parents uh, became divorced and my mother remarried mm -hmm. and we relocated from Colorado to California. And, and when I got there, of course, it was a, a new area, new people. And I tried to find something that I would feel uh, familiar to. So I joined the choir and uh and there was this girl in choir that was just <laughs> i saw her on stage one day and i turned to my new friends and said i don't know who that is but i have got to figure it out you gotta find out <laughs> yeah you know and of course you know of all the 
of all the hormones of a 16, 17 year old, <laughs> you know, I was certainly attracted physically first. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the first day of my senior year, who walks into my English class oh. with, that, with that cute little redhead? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh, this is my lucky day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to study I, extra hard I, too. <laughs> oh, oh, I strategized. I, I went up to the teacher. I said, "Oh, that sweetheart, that little girl over there." <laughs> I got an empty desk next to me, and the <laughs> teacher just shook her head and said, "Mark, you better behave." Yeah. I said, oh, <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> and uh, I've got to tell you, over our junior, our senior year, rather, we started dating, and uh, two weeks out of high school, we were married. Oh wow. That's amazing. And, um, and then three months later, we had our first child. Didn't take long, did it? It doesn't take long. Well, you know, the gestational period is different, different parts of the world. Uh. That's just what I'll say. <laughs> but yeah. but um, that, so to get back, what was it like? Yep, yep. Um, being married at 18 years old, mm. it was a real big awakening yes. to... You've got to figure it out. Yeah. There was no choice. Yeah, that's an amazing story. You know, there's so much we could talk about, which I'd love to yeah. explore that a little bit in a while. But, um, you know, when you're growing up, there's often times we have people around us that are, you know, quite influential, quite positive in our life. Who was that for you? Mm. Oh, boy. Probably I, had many. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have so many. And uh, it's interesting, the emotions that come as soon as you start thinking about the influential people in your life. Yeah. Um, my uncle, my uncle, Bob, uncle Bob, he, uh, he came to my rescue on a night that I found myself in a bit of trouble. I'd rather not go into the full no, story, but I let's, just say, yeah, yeah. let's just say, there was some my issues. Uncle, yeah, he was there that night. Yeah. And, uh, and it was just amazing to have his influence just someone who was willing to be there when when times were tough. And uh, another great influencer was actually a choir teacher. Oh. Uh, uh, it, it started in the eighth grade when he convinced me to, to try out for choir. I told him I didn't know how to sing. And he said, well, do you know how to sing Happy Birthday? I said, sure enough. He goes, <laughs> there let's you go. go. And that's how... That's how I got into it. He just had this belief in me. And I think he really shaped a lot of how I view the world. Yes, um, absolutely. Just, you know, what do you know? And how could you move for, forward with that? There seems um, to be a lot of questions around, you know, um, lacking of confidence and self-belief. And it only takes that catalyst of one positive person in your life to, to change that. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. It is, you know, what I love is, and I said this earlier, we're all on this journey, right? We're yep. all trying to figure out where we're going. Yep. And, you know, we're talking about my teenage years and it, it was a difficult time, just like so many other people, mm -hmm. uh, nothing out of the ordinary, but I did lack some confidence and competence. So yeah. with an F and a P and <laughs> Just having someone believe in you, someone be your cheerleader, someone being on your side, suddenly you start to look at the world as a, instead of a, a world of distractions and difficulties, you look at it from a lens of possibility. Yes. And that to me was uh, one of the greatest things that ever happened was this, when I look at my life, the amount of people that were just were cheering me on. Yeah, it's a, it's a really great story. I love love the fact we're having this, you know, exploratory story. It just, it the thing that came to mind, Mark, was the fact that inadvertently that person who believed in you was showing leadership um, skills, weren't they? And I'm wondering, when was it that you recognized, um, you know, leaders in your life and what did that look like? You know, uh, there are so many great leaders uh, that I've had in my life. I, I think of this wonderful, wonderful woman. Uh, she was one of my uh, superiors for several years. Stephanie mm -hmm. is her name. She just, again, believed in me. Yeah. 
And not only did she believe in me, she encouraged me and she wanted me. She saw something in me yeah. that I might not have seen fully in myself at the time, but because of her just persistence and her belief, suddenly what she was suggesting stepped from this, hmm, wouldn't that be interesting? Wouldn't that be neat to, oh, maybe I could try that on to finally, yeah, I am that to now I live that. And, you know, this that journey from that journey. I don't know to I am. It's that, you know, this, this whole journey from student to teacher of which you could um, claim yourself now, I wonder from, you know, we talk about leadership from a professional perspective. What about a personal family perspective? Does leadership exist in both um, scenarios? Uh, you know, I actually, I believe leadership exists. Uh, it, here, here's the litmus test to find out if someone can be a leader. Yeah. Are they breathing? <laughs> Oh, that, that opens up a wide range of possibilities, doesn't it? Well, 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 it really does, because we often talk about leaders being these fabulous people who have really crafted and helped us see things. But we also see leaders who were not the leaders that maybe we needed, but we learned from just the same. Does and it mean that we, they have, are they typically introverted or extroverted type people? Oh, no, no. See, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't prescribe to the introverted versus right. extroverted. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that the vast majority of us are very ambiverted, right? We vacillate back and forth. Yep, yep. And we try to flex one versus the other based on a situation. But the reality is it comes down to um, how do we connect with the world? So I believe in our personal life, in our business life, and in our relationships, also in the community. How are we connecting with everyone? And leadership is about uh, influencing. Yeah. It's not about dictating, it's about influencing for better. So if somebody's on this call today and they, they don't really understand leadership, you've just talked about the ability to influence and they're on this journey, they feel like they've got this, this spark inside them. They don't actually understand what it means. It's a power that they've yet to harness. How do you uh, uh, suggest somebody go and, and I guess self analyze whether or not it's in them and they could bring it out that well, leadership uh, tray? Yeah, absolutely. And, and in, my doctoral studies and in my academic research and in my personal life and in my businesses that I own, the thing mm. that I see as a constant is everyone has the ability to be a leader. And let's just look at, if you don't mind, a couple different areas of yes, our lives. Uh, so let's look at self. Let's look at how we could lead ourselves. Um, and, I'll, and I'll tie this back to a, a formula that I've created uh, but let's tie it back to leading ourself, taking care of ourself, saying, what do I want? Yeah. Right. Uh, let's just if, if someone is struggling with wondering if they're a leader or not, take a moment and look and say, what do you want? If you could change your life, what is one thing that you want? How would what is one step you could take towards that? Right. Asking yourself. What, what could I do? What's one action I could take? That's self, mm -hmm. self-leadership. Uh, leadership actually starts with self. It doesn't mean that you master yourself. It just means you begin to see a possibility of who you are and who you can become. Yeah, yeah, that's right? amazing. Um, so self, just ask yourself, what, what can I do? And then begin to look at relationships. What do I want in this relationship? Is it a, for me, my wife, but also my children and my grandchildren, but also I have 20 employees. Mm. I, what, you know, so we often talk about relationships about, you know, a spouse or a loved one, but how, what type of boss do I want to be? Yes. How, how do I want to inspire my employees that are 16, 17, 18, 19 years old. Yep, yep. I wonder, can I ask you a question while I've got it on the tip of my tongue? Sure. What do you think, uh, being a parent as well as a grandparent, 
What have they taught you about yourself? You know, I learned, I learned so much from my grandchildren. Yeah. I think the thing that I love about children is they have this sense of wonder and mm. awe. Yep. They're, they're so curious and they're energetic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they just harness some of their energy. Just bottle it up. <laughs> just, just take one pill a day and I'm sure we'll be fine. Right? <laughs> but I think children, what I've learned about them is they look at something is so curious and excited. Uh, watching them run from activity to activity, watching them um, interact with friends and be excited. And there are no boundaries, right? Boundaries are, are learned behavior. Yes. For them, it's let's just play. Let's just have fun. And shouldn't we all live that way? Yeah, so I was going to ask you about that, given that, you know, where we are and where, you know, adults, should we embrace that childhood, I guess, approach to life, even professionally? Yeah, I think we should absolutely embrace it professionally. Mm. Um, again, I, I, I have 20 employees right now in one of my businesses that, that my wife and I own. Mm. And, you know, it's amazing to listen to a 17-year-old who's in high school, give ideas and suggestions on how to improve a million dollar business. Yeah, wow. And, and for us, I, I just, we just promoted a girl this morning. And I told her it's because we trust her. Trust. We trust yeah. this 17 year old with all of the money. Yeah, well, because there's an element of risk there, isn't there? Like, and it's one of the, it's one of the things I was thinking about talking with you, if we would, if we could. Um, you know, we know that risk is omnipresent throughout our life, both personally and, and professionally. I wonder um, how should people look at risk, and should they embrace it, fear it? How do they navigate it? You know, um, fear is a fear, an interesting thing. We could talk about fear and building courage and overcoming mm -hmm. things, uh, but. But the reality is, yes, there there should be fear about certain things. Yeah. Uh, don't do things that will cause bodily harm to yourself or to others. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's okay to be afraid to uh, step on stage for the first time. It's okay to be afraid to share your true self. Yeah. The real problem is when you stop sharing and doing what you want. So as a leader, and as I think about uh, my employees, this again, this goes back to building a connection with them. I am constantly finding out what drives them. What do they want? What roadblocks can I remove? And how can I build them? Yeah, breaking down those beliefs is very important. It's so incredibly powerful. Now, earlier on in the call, Mark, you talked about uh, a formulaic approach that you have. I'm wondering if you can reveal what that is and, and explain it to those who don't understand. I would love to. It's it's E equals MC squared. I think we've all heard that I formula think so. before. <laughs> yeah, right? It's, it's a big one. But here's what I love about this, because this is an equation that really works uh, in our personal life, uh, in our professional life. And it's an equation that will help anyone anywhere get what they want. So let me break it down. E, excellence. It's about defining what excellence looks like for you. Well, E, right, excellence equals M, mindset, C, care, and C, connection. When you put those together, it really helps you achieve anything you want. The problem is most people get wonky in one or two of those areas and it throws the whole equation off. Yeah. So I love just breaking it down and talking about how we can build mm -hmm. each of those areas. And this is where when I'm speaking or when I'm coaching a business owner, CEOs and entrepreneurs, this is what we do is we break down those areas and find out how we could build that back up so that that fear goes away. Those distractions are no longer there. Yeah. So that those things that stop you are now becoming the opportunities that fuel you. 
Yeah, it's a wonderful approach. It's so refreshing to hear something uh, as vital as this that is going to change people's lives uh, in the leadership space. Now, um, I'd love to know a little bit about, you know, you've talked about your doctoral studies, but you're also a certified high performance coach. Now, where did this come from? I'd love to explore that a little bit to help people understand. You know, um, I'm going to step back for just a half of a moment. One of yes. the things that has fueled me is this constant question I have in the back of my mind. I've had it for many, many years. Why is it that there are some people that just seem to be more successful than the, their counterparts, than their peers, than those around them? Hmm. They have the same ingredients. They have the same opportunities. And yet some people flourish and other people struggle. And I'm, I always wanted to figure out what is it that causes just those people to be successful. So in my doctoral studies, I really began to research that. And then after my doctoral studies, learning is never over. And one of the things I love is getting certifications and studying and reading books mm. and doing whatever I can to constantly learn. And that's where the certified high performance coaching uh, cropped up is it is a program through the high performance institute oh yes that, oh yeah that very popular people. very very oh, very very popular yeah, yeah. Uh, that i use with a lot of my clients but i also use uh my e equals mc squared with my clients as well because it's this whole idea of wherever you are let's get you unstuck let's get you uh in, instead of being overwhelmed because overwhelmed causes underperforming, yep. uh, causes stress, causes depression, causes anxiety, causes, right? Not clinical. We're no. talking temporary, situational. Yep. Let's get you unstuck and move you in the right direction. Bit of cause and effect going on there, Mark. Now, I'm wondering, uh, on a global stage, you, you would be observing, you know, uh, you know quote unquote, leaders in, in the, in the uh, visible, I guess, public sphere. If you had to choose one that's really sticking out for you right now, just so people get an idea of where you think leadership should be, who would you choose? Oh, wow. That's a fabulous question. Uh, I would say Dr. Marty Seligman. Um, he was the former president of the uh, APA, American Psychological Association. Oh, yes. Yep. Yeah. And I just love his philosophies on leadership. Mm -hmm. And his ideas of let's stop looking at the past. We all have the past. Got it. It's that schema, those experiences that have brought us to where we are today. But instead, let's flip it and start looking through positive psychology and the positive lens to get someone moving in the right direction. And I Paradigm love, shift. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me ask, you know. I've driven in Australia multiple times. Um, do you drive down the road, Rick, looking through the rear view mirror? Never. So then why do people live that way? Yes. Well, <laughs> right. It's a, it's a philosophy, isn't it? Well, it's, it's embedded in everything. It's even embedded in how we grade people at school. Mm -hmm. We grade them on, on a standardized test and what we think they should know before, right? How about instead, let's flip it and start looking towards the future. Okay, great. Given whatever you have, whatever baggage you're carrying, whatever things you have in your backpack, we all have something. Let's now move forward. Let's figure out how to strengthen ourselves to move in the right direction towards excellence. Let's move in the direction that changes how we think about the world. Yes, uh, you know, I, I've always talked about the school system and wondering whether or not it was nothing more than a social studies event. But, you know, there's there's a place and time for history, but there's certainly forward thinkers like yourself are going to change the world. Now, I want to talk about humans and human vulnerability. As a leader in a professional setting, do you think that it's um, OK to, or as a strength, let's call it, to show your human more vulnerable side? Absolutely. Absolutely. I was working with uh, an executive and uh, this particular executive called me into her call center. 
Mm. She had a very, very large national call center. And she wanted to find out why so many people were quitting because oh. every time attrition, right? Every time someone leaves, it costs money, of course. lower productivity, yep. lower morale. And so I, uh, I knew a little bit about this organization and I knew that there were two entrances, the front door or the back door where all the employees come in. Uh. So I, of course, went to the back door. There's a security guard there too. And, <laughs> and I, I let, they let me in and I took the opportunity to walk through and see what was happening in their organization before I spoke with this uh, vice president over this division. Ah. And something I found out was they have what's called an open door, uh, I guess, an open door philosophy. Yep. They want their employees to come in. Um, I asked I asked this individual, how many open doors do you think I saw on executive row? And she says, oh, all of them. I said, nope, not a single one. Not one of them. Your open door principles and philosophies are all about closing the door and keeping yourself separated. How are you going to build trust in an organization if you don't care about your employees, if you're not connecting with your employees, if they don't know who you are? Yes. And I took her out onto to the floor to introduce her to her team leads who work for her that she's never met. Yeah. <laughs> It's transformational, isn't it? I, it's funny because we talk about at My Future Business underneath our logo, helpful people helping people. And mm -hmm. businesses is, uh, by and large, nothing more than a group of people trying to achieve one particular objective. Do you agree yeah. with that? Oh, yes, absolutely. Ab absolutely. And so I... I yeah, and I think about, and I think about that question, and, and it goes on to further. You know, your closed door philosophy. How many times have you walked into these organisations and seen one espouse philosophy, but actual fact, the opposite is happening? Is it common? Oh, it's it's very common. Mm. It's very common. In ninety nine percent of businesses, where do the executives park? Yeah, different spaces. Yeah, right, right up front too, <laughs> right? Yep. So then that is instantly psychologically telling your employees, we are better than you. We're we different. do not want to be by you. Right. So now connection, connection is lacking. So going back to your question a moment ago, yep. should you be vulnerable? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yep. Do yep. you share your deepest, darkest secrets? No, but at least be human. Be human. Yep. And it's okay to be a little bit emotional and show your lighter side that you have a family life, you have hobbies and all these wonderful things. Now, I'm wondering if we could, Mark, is to talk about the types of businesses that you enjoy working with. Oh, uh, so the, the short answer is I love businesses that have people. Yeah. Uh, but but That's a good the, the reality is the business <laughs> that I love the most is the entrepreneur. Yeah. I, I am, so my wife and I, we've been entrepreneurs for many, many years. We run a very successful line of businesses. We've owned several. Um, but what I find is that the entrepreneur feels alone. The entrepreneur is working 80 hours a week and no one is in their corner. The entrepreneur is someone who has, has a dream that has suddenly become their nightmare. Yes. And I want to help them because if we could change the entrepreneurs, the solopreneurs, all the way up to entrepreneurs who are founders or presidents of small businesses. Uh, now, when I say small business, maybe it's 10 or $20 million even significant. Up. Yeah. Right. Right. But they're still being led by their business and they're not leading their business leading it yeah and i want to help them rekindle that excitement and joy that they had when they stayed up that late night many years ago with an idea with that you know that genesis that 
catalyst for that new business idea. I know that there would be a lot of people on this call today, Mark, that are very excited to to have met you on the show and to talk more about um, what you do. Now, I think it's important to go one step further and, and share a little bit about um, not only where people find you, what's the best place, but uh, how do they connect with you? And once they've done that, what's the process for onboarding? Yeah, absolutely. Best thing to do, go to my website, the happinessbreakthrough.com. That's, That's a... the easiest way to find me or on social media, Instagram, on Facebook, the happiness breakthrough, or look for Dr. Mark Leonard. And the process to connect with me is going to any of those locations and sending a message. Or, just reaching out. Yeah, just reaching out because there's someone that's listening right now that's in pain yep. and you're kind of tired of being in pain. You're kind of tired of feeling like you're just spinning your wheels. Let's stop spinning. Let's start moving. And, and I just want to help you or any organization, big or small, stop spinning. Find that happiness. Find that joy. Find that excitement that you used to have. Let's rekindle it and let's get you going at lightning speeds. Yeah, wow. I'm very excited. I'm sitting here barely able to contain myself. <laughs> so if you're on today's call and you've been listening in to this wonderful conversation that uh, Dr. Mark Leonard and I have had, um, make sure you find the link no matter where you see this call. You're going to find that link. Uh, in this case, it's thehappinessbreakthrough.com. You'll see it somewhere on this page. Be sure to click through send that message connect with mark he will have a conversation with you he doesn't buy it too hard <laughs> no. and with all that said mark thank you so very much for spending some time having a chat with me on the my future business show today thank you my friend thanks for joining us today if you enjoyed the call then make sure to subscribe leave a comment share us with your friends and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews and if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.